Richardson calling the signal. He likes to spread out, not so much a straight drop back type passer. He likes to roll out. A lot of draws, as we see right there with the handoff coming to the tailback, out across the 45-yard line. Again, it's Eisman carrying the ball. He had a good day against uh, University of Hawaii, at least relatively speaking, a pretty good day. He gained 39 yards, but no one really had all that good a day offensively for the Grizzlies against the Rainbows of Hawaii. They lost by that score of 40 to nothing. It'll be second down and nine now after gain of six yards. A beautiful day here in Montana. And the first game of the year played on this field. A pitch comes to the tailback for a gain of some three, four yards. Again, it's Eisman running out of the tailback spot after he'd been listed as the starting fullback, but Eisman going at tailback. Montana has had a lot of injuries this week, and I'm sure that has something to do with Eisman playing uh, full tailback rather than fullback. They've also had some uh, switchovers on their offensive line as uh, Tom Rutt, who was... Uh, Played, go played tackle for them last week, has now been moved back to uh, guard. Played tackle for them last week, now been moved back to guard, where it's he normally a, is. A third and two at the 46, trying the right side of the line, very close to first down yardage. It was again Eisman, who's done the majority of the ball carrying, and he has just enough for the first down. So the Grizzlies roll to their second first down keeping the ball primarily on the ground on this series. Grizzlies in the very distinctive copper uniforms with the gold numerals. On a first and 10 now, Richardson on a long count, fakes the draw, is back to throw, staying in the pocket this time, throws over the middle, and the loggers are there to cover it quickly, but the pass will be complete. Thrown again to Eisman, who's all over the place. Boy, Greg Eisman has certainly been the number one weapon so far for the Grizzlies. They're moving the ball well. Montana has been mixing up their uh, running and passing game pretty well. They came out throwing the ball, and uh, that loosened up the logger defense, so they're able to run the ball a little bit. Now they're back throwing the ball again, so they are looking very balanced rather than just being primarily a running team as they have been in the past. A gain of four brings up a second and six now. The ball at the longer 33. Puget Sound almost jumps offside. Spinning into the line for virtually no gain at all on the play is Eisman once again. Talk about a workhorse. Eisman has done all the ball carrying and has received one of the passes. I was going to call them the Ohio State of the, of the Big Sky Conference in the pregame. Maybe I should start calling them the USC of the Big Sky Conference when they give all the running plays to run one their tail back. It'll bring up a third and four now. The setter, Brian Carraway, leads him out of the huddle. He's backed up by Glenn Dacus out of Enumclaw High School from our area. On a third and four. And will come to Eisman. He'll be stacked up short of the first down. He gets the ball down to the 35-yard line. He'll be stopped at that point, though. So the middle of that Puget Sound line reacted very well for the loggers, starting at nose guard. It's Marsh Hansen. The tackles are Mike Pia, along with Jeff Green, playing anchor in this afternoon. It's Mark Buchanan. And starting at blood end, Joe Rubel instead of Craig Matheson. Rubel had a great afternoon last Saturday. It'll be a fourth down and very short yardage. In fact, they'll come in and measure. Looks like the loggers had stacked him up short. As they stretch the chains out, it will be just short. Well, you couldn't be much closer than that and not have the first down. So it will be a fourth down, and here comes the first decision of the afternoon now for the Grizzlies. So Larry Donovan with the decision to make here, and it would appear they will go for it on fourth down in a matter of just inches. And you would assume the loggers will certainly be keyed right here on Greg Eisman. The fans like the decision. Let's see, though, if the quarterback might do it himself. No, he hands the ball off for a first down. <laughs> Diving across the line that time. 
and who just checked into the ball game, as a matter of fact, it's uh, Joe Kluswich. Kluswich had the best week of all the rushers last week for the uh, University of Montana, as Kluswich last week gained 65 yards, and that time got a big first down. First and 10 now from the logger, 31. Montana with the first possession of the game. Picks up the big fourth down conversion there. Back to throw, the handoff comes down to Eisman on the delay, trying the right side. Loggers will stack him up for a gain of some four yards or so on the play. Darren Smith came up to make the stop from his cornerback spot, along with Jeff Green, the Loggers' right tackle. At the linebackers this afternoon for Puget Sound, Jeff Walters regains his starting spot at the strong linebacker spot. As Scott Stolzenberg slides over to the quick linebacker, the cornerbacks are Darren Smith on the left side, Larry Smith on the right side. Tom Gunder starts this afternoon at Monster, and the safety is the longer defensive captain, Buster Crook. Second and five. The ball just outside the longer 25. Handoff again to Eisman. He has a short gain of a couple. Coming up for the loggers, Joe Rubel was the first man to get there making the hit for Puget Sound. Montana has moved the ball well in this first possession. They're faced now with the third and three from the logger 24. Eisman now has seven carries for 22 yards, where uh, no other back for uh, Montana has carried the ball more than once. Kluswich had that big fourth down conversion. That certainly was a big play for him. A second down now for the Grizzlies. Richardson will hand the ball off to Eisman. He eludes one logger tackler, but is met by a host of other white shirted loggers as he tried to sweep the left side. Scott Stolzenberg playing the uh, quick linebacker spot, as I mentioned, came over to make the hit for Puget Sound to lead a host of loggers. It'll bring up a fourth down. Fourth this time now and five. And let's see if this time they'll try to go for the field goal or we'll again try to convert and it will be a field goal attempt coming up. It'll be Dean Rominger to try it. Rominger out of the hold of Richardson. Ball is put down as the kick is high and the kick is good. So Rominger with the field goal and Montana is on the scoreboard first as the Grizzlies are on top by a score of three to nothing. Rominger is a fine all-purpose kicker, handles all the kicking for the Grizzlies, just as Wade Stevens does for the Loggers. <laughs> Rob Jones on the return, and despite the fine punt by Wade Stevens, the Grizzlies again have good field position. They'll have the ball at their own 44-yard line. Grizzlies lead it here by a score of three to nothing. The near side comes uh, McCauley, and the far side is Sunquist. From the eye on first and ten. Handoff comes to uh, the fullback this time. And Klusevich has a, uh, a gain across the middle. It's one of the first times that the fullback has carried the ball. And Kluswich, with a good, good acceleration, picked up a good gain. He's carried the ball twice now. Both have been big gains for them. First time he carried was that first down on a fourth and one. So a second down and very short yardage. As the pitch will come for a, uh, a pass attempt. It's way overthrown. The Loggers got to the football, and it's intercepted by Puget Sound. Coming down with it for the Loggers was the uh, cornerback, or was it Buster? It was Buster Crook to safety. It was a halfback pass that time that was badly overthrown. The receiver was open, thrown right into his hand. True. Uh, Dresden just threw the ball right to him. So really what we have here is kind of an exchange of interceptions. As UPS got the ball and interceptions, of Montana tried to get fancy and pull a halfback pass. Montana now from the 41 on that delayed handoff to Eisman. He breaks one tackle. And he's all the way to midfield and back into longer territory. For the Loggers, coming up from the right cornerback spot to make the stop for Puget Sound was uh, was Smith, and in this case, it's Larry Smith. Loggers have the two Smiths, Larry at one corner on the right side and Darren on the left side. 
It'll be a first down for Montana. As they have the ball now at the logger 48. Montana leads three to nothing. From the eye, Richardson going all the way at quarterback in his first start. Fakes the draw, back to throw, in trouble now. Gets away, still on his feet. He's down to the 35. Richardson with a nice scramble as the loggers almost had him for a big loss. Jeff Green, the logger right tackle, the man who eventually brought him down. Both quarterbacks have scrambled pretty well, though. A gain of three brings up a second and seven. Each team has an interception. The interception against the loggers, Rod Driveston, was the first time this year he's been picked off. Second and seven. Flags fly. And the play will not even stand. Apparently an infraction before the snap of the ball. And it'll be a legal procedure called. So on the five-yard penalty against Montana, it'll bring up a second and 12 now. And the ball goes back to midfield. Grizzlies lead it here by a score of three to nothing. Just over two minutes left in our first quarter of play from Missoula. Reminder, next week it's PLU football here on C-10. The Lutes against Southern Oregon from Franklin Pierce Stadium. That'll be our college game. Faking the draw, rolling right, Richardson, pump fake, still has the ball, and a nice shoestring tackle executed by the Loggers at the 45-yard line. There to make the stop again, Jeff Green, who's very much making his presence felt. Green came all the way over from his right tackle spot to make that stop on the defensive left side of the field. It's a good run there by Green, as Jeff Walters of uh, UPS almost had him in the backfield for a couple yards lost, but he broke that tackle and was able to advance it up the field for about five more yards. So it'll bring up about a third and four for uh, Montana. Gain of some eight yards on the play as it's at the 42 now. Interesting to see what they try here. If they try and pass or they try and uh, give it to Eisman again. They've run a lot of play fake, which is their style, certainly. This time rolling left. Richardson still has the ball. Now has to throw to the near side, and the ball is caught for a first down. So the Grizzlies convert the first down. Making the catch was one of the tight ends, John Henson. Henson is a 6'2 and a half junior. He went to Shoreline High School in Seattle. So Henson, another familiar name. He and Brian Salonen alternate time at tight end. They're both outstanding receivers and tight ends in terms of blocking, too. There was a fake draw to Eisman on that play, and that might have froze the strong safety just enough for Henson to get open. The ball's at the 29 of the loggers. As again, Montana threatens. Richardson rolls right this time, throws to the near side, almost intercepted. Oh, Buster Crook almost had his second one. Buster, cut in front, pounds his fist in disgust, thinking he should have had that one. And he almost did. Salonen, that other tight end we just mentioned, was the intended receiver. So it'll be a second and ten now, and now we see a flag down on the field, and they're talking to Montana. Quite a few penalties so far in this ball game, and the loggers last week were penalized very little. Going to be a major mark off against the loggers here. And this is going to put Montana right down well within range. It's a roughing the passer call against the loggers. So Puget's down a bit too aggressive and going after Richardson. The ball will be at the 14 yard line with the first and 10 now for Montana. Richardson on a long count. Now we'll give the ball off to the fullback, and the loggers are right there. Ball apparently squirted loose in there for a moment. It did, but he was already down. There was a big scramble after the ball, but the referee was very uh, persistent in pointing right at the spot where the man was down. Kluswich was the man who picked up no yardage on the play. And it'll be a second and 10. The ball's still at the 14. 
middle of that longer line, led by the nose guard, Marsh Hansen, right there on that play. Second and 10 from the 14. Perhaps a little movement before the snap, and yes, indeed, there was. The play will not even stand. And this one, it looks like, will go against Montana. Uh, the quarter ran out. Oh, was it the quarter? Okay. It's like there was the movement before the snap of the ball, too, but it was just the quarter running out. So we'll change it. We'll have more football coming up for you right after this. That's defensive back there. The ball did hit McCauley in the hands, but he uh, bumped him just enough to make him drop it. By Gunder there on the coverage, along with Buster Crook. The ball is at the 14-yard line as Montana again threatens. It'll be a third and 10 at the 14, and a big play here for the Loggers, trailing three to nothing. Handoff will come on and draw, and with good running room down inside the five-yard line, down near the goal line, it'll be enough for the first down and almost a touchdown. Some great blocking by the left side of the offensive line for Montana to really open a hole. A fine gain again by Greg Eisman. Going to be a measurement. They're bringing the chains out. Well, apparently, Eisman had his knee touch and obviously did. He'll be very close to the first down, but it's not as much a foregone conclusion as I thought it was at first. He wound up down close to that goal line. Comes a big measurement right here. And it will be just short. So now a big fourth down. The Grizzlies leading by a score of three to nothing. They've gone for a uh, first down earlier on a fourth down, and it looks like they'll do it again right here. I'd say so. Field goal really doesn't do them much good at this time. A six nothing lead really means not a lot. They might as well go for seven points right now. They went to Kluswich last time in a fourth down situation. Let's see what they do here, Richardson. Hands the ball off for a dive off the right side, and there'll be enough yardage for the first down, as that time they went to Kluswich again. So Joe Kluswich, twice in a fourth and short situation, picks up a big first down, and now it'll be a first and goal coming up for Montana. Interesting running attack for Montana. As they give the ball to Ice in practically every play, except when they really need a yard, then they do give it to their fullback. The ball is at the three. Richardson has engineered a good mixed attack so far. Gives the ball off to Kluswich again, and he tries the right side, but is short. It'll bring up a second and goal now. Mike Nelson made the stop for the loggers. So a second and goal from the two. Richardson gives the ball off the ball, almost popped loose. There's a scramble after it, and Klusvich, the ball carrier. Apparently the ball still belongs to Montana. Mon the ball popped loose there for just a moment. Yeah, Montana maintained possession. I couldn't see who got it. The referee reached in and pulled the ball out of the pile real quick before I could see who fell on it. Well, Montana now wants to talk it over. Kelly Richardson goes over to the far sideline and will talk it over. Tom Gunder comes to the near sideline. Gunder talks with Ron Simonson. The Loggers next week again will be on the road as they'll be playing at Hayward State down in the Bay Area. They'll be home week after that hosting Humboldt State. It'll be a big third and goal from the one coming up here for Montana. Montana really has two downs to get the ball in from across, across the one because I'm sure after they go for fourth and one about outside the five, they're not going to go for a field goal now. Might try and mix it up a little bit and give the ball to Eisman rather than giving it to Kluswich in all the short yardage situations. Although a pitch back is kind of a dangerous situation to do on third and one, you certainly don't want to pitch back and have a bad pitch back or have the guy caught in the backfield on a good penetration by the defensive end and end up being having about a fourth and five to go, then they might have to settle for a field goal. The receivers already have left the huddle. And now here come the rest of the Grizzlies. Receivers aren't going to, they're just going to stand and watch the play. They don't need to know the count. 
Richardson gives the ball off for a touchdown. It's Kluswich who got it. Joe Kluswich, who's done it in the big yard, the short yardage situation, does it right there, diving in for the first touchdown of the game. It's 9 0 now. The point after attempt will come now from Dean Rominger. Out of the hold of Kelly Richardson. The kick is up and is good. So Montana with the first touchdown of the ball game here in the second quarter. And now with 13.44 left to go in the first half, the score is the University of Montana Grizzlies 10 and the University of Puget Sound Hoggers nothing. The Hoggers have had just one sustained drive, but Jim Montana has certainly controlled the football. That was about a 60-yard punt there. Well, Wade Stevens has had a couple of great weeks of kicking. Wade has been the punter for Puget Sound now for four years. And this year has added the place kicking duties with Monty Laughlin graduated. Of course, uh, being at 3,200 feet altitude, I think the ball will be traveling a lot farther than it normally does in uh, Tacoma. The ball's at the 36-yard line, first and 10 for Montana. Richardson will not get conservative. To the far side, not quite held on a fine defensive play turned in by the larger secondary. Brian Thomas, the man in there playing. Thomas has replaced Tom Gunder right now at the monster. So it'll be a second and 10. The ball at the 36. Richardson on the delay, gives it off to Eisman. He's hit solidly and brought down on the far side after a short gain. Uh, Marty Morganweg is now in there at quarterback for uh, Montana. So Morganweg takes over. He's been the starting quarterback and figured to be the starter. He's bearing down on an all-time Montana passing record. He's 184 yards. Don't know whether he'll get it today, but he certainly should get it before the season's up. And he's only a junior. That is something. Morganweg out of San Jose. Spells the last name M-O-R-N-H-I-N. W E G morning wag. Back to throw. Now the loggers put the rush on him to the far side, and it'll be incomplete. So the loggers hold on defense. That's one of Puget Sound's better defensive stands right there. Salonen was the intended receiver, and Buster Crook all over him. Buster at just five nine, and Salonen at six two. Loggers will send Bagby back deep, and if I'm not mistaken, this is the first punt of the afternoon for Montana. I believe it is. Loggers do not put the rush on, and the kick is a great one. Bagby having to go way back, takes it back at about his own six. Back up to the 10, to the 15, and spun down across the 15-yard line. It's been their own territory, and Stevens now needs a good kick to get them out of their own territory. Let's see if they rush Stevens with Wade standing in his own end zone. The snap is a good one. Ooh, and it was pretty close to being blocked, but the personal protector was able to keep the man from getting to the putter as Stevens' kick will bounce across the 50, down to around the 40-yard line. Wade got a good bounce. 49-yard punt. It went about 30 yards in the air and then bounced another 19 yards, so he really did get a good bounce. If that, ball, if that ball would have just splatted right on the 40-yard line where it hit, it would have... <laughs> It would have been good field position for Montana and a chance to add on to their lead. And Splat, it might have. It's been a very wet fall here, but that ball did take a good roll for the loggers. Now let's see, is it Morning Wegg still a quarterback? Yes, it is. Marty Morning Wegg in his second series as the quarterback. He's straight back to throw, setting up. To the far side, it's caught up at the 40-yard uh, line, down to midfield and into logger territory. Well, Morningwood gets off the snag there. That's his first completion of the afternoon as he is now one for three. But you said before that he is from San Jose, California. And certainly has been my experience that everyone from California can throw the football. At least their college teams throw all of them throw the football. The ball will be at the longer 42-yard line as Montana gets a good chunk in one play. 
Morning Wag in just a second series. Kelly Richardson started this afternoon. Morning Wag with some play faking. Will hang that ball up and it'll be batted down incomplete. That was a sack there as Morning Wag jumped up to throw the ball and had uh, Dick Crab right in his face and tried to pull it down and Crab just buried him right in the turf there as Crab was blitzing on that play. Dick last week had a couple of good stops on the longer specialty team. He normally doesn't see a whole lot of playing time, but a big play right there by the redshirt freshman. Certainly is. As UPS is starting to get very aggressive on defense, starting to blitz and all that. As the morning way, so both Montana quarterbacks are getting too much time, and they're getting their receivers wide open and completing them for big gains. From Grizzly territory at the 49, on the delay, Eisman with a flag down will bounce off one man at the midfield stripe and get it back to longer territory, but let's see what the flag will be. That time on the draw, Eisman got wide, but it looks like uh, there could be a hold coming up right here. Not as many penalties in the second quarter as in the first. And it will be a hold on Montana. So the Grizzlies, after getting the ball into longer territory, have now sputtered a bit on offense. Montana leads 10 to nothing, 3 to nothing after one quarter, and a short touchdown run on a third and goal by Joe Kluswich, taking care of the only touchdown of the game. The ball at the 35-yard line is Morgan Wake taking a deep drop, perhaps setting up a screen, swings it to the near side. One blocker fought off, but a good tackle from behind. Good defensive play by the Loggers. Kluswich is the man who made the catch. And a good defensive play again by Green for the Loggers. Jeff Green saw the, uh, the blocker stripped away, and Jeff came up to make a good stop for Puget Sound. He sparkled this afternoon. Third and 24 for Montana. I'd say that's what you call an obvious passing down. And I don't mean just a screen pass either. Loggers have five defensive backs in accordingly. Morning Wag is back to throw. Cranking up. He'll throw it over the middle. Wide open but dropped. At the 45-yard line. Ball hit right in the shoulder pads. That's called uh, not catching the ball with your hands, letting it bounce off your shoulder pads. I would say that's exactly what it's called. It's a tight end. It wouldn't have been a first down anyway, though. He was about five yards short of a first down, and Buster Crook was right there to lay the hit on him. But it certainly would have given uh, Montana a chance to maybe try and angle this punt out of bounds inside the 20. Now their punter will just be trying to root it as long as he can. Punter from his own 30. Rominger did that last time and does it again. A high sailing punt. Mm -hmm. Bagby is going to let it bounce. The Loggers have to open. will get into the end zone. And it's not, I don't believe, or did it get in. It is down. That ball took a hop straight up and allowed Montana to get back and down it very deep in logger territory. So Stevens will have to kick it away again for the loggers. To the near side, it's Lowry. Jones to the far side. Jones will call for the fair catch and will make it just in Grizzly territory at about the 48. So Montana, again, good field position. But, uh, 40-yard punt there. Clock is down now to 4.29 left to go in the second quarter. And Montana leads the Loggers 10 to nothing. The copper-shirted Grizzlies. Quarterback, he'll be Morningweg, who did not start. He's back to throw, fakes the handoff. And the pass will be incomplete, thrown a bit too far to the outside. Intended there for the tight end, coming across the field was uh, Hinson, John Hinson, Shoreline High Product. We mentioned on our pregame comments, there are 31 players from Washington on this University of Montana team. Part of the reason for that is certainly their coaching staff with a very strong Washington connection, certainly. A lot of familiar names. For instance, a former logger, one of the coaches here, one of the assistants.
Yeager is here, one of the a former logger, and also uh, Larry uh, Flagel out of PLU, and Lynn Rosenbach, who coached in Washington for a long time. So those guys certainly give them a strong recruiting drive in the state of Washington. A second and ten now. Eisman will take the delayed handoff. He's got some room as he's out across midfield and down to the logger 42-yard line, perhaps closer to the 41. Some good run there by Eisman. He showed a lot of nimbleness there for a big man as he was cutting in and out, slipping tackles and everything else. Kind of reminiscent of Marcus Allen's touchdown run against the 49ers last week. Now you sound like Howard Cosell. Greg Eisman is both a fullback and a tailback, so he has both size and good speed. For Montana, it's a first and ten at the logger, 41. From the eye now. Again, a delayed handoff as Eisman will gain much shorter yardage this time, gain of only a couple. Dick Crab again in there on the stop. Kurt McGinnis was it? McGinnis, the ball carrier that time, as he had taken over at tailback. Eisman picked up his uh, 51st yard of the day on that last carry, so maybe they decided to give him a rest for the half, as he is by far the leading ball carrier for the ball game. McGinnis is getting down the line in the Montana depth chart, so right now the Grizzlies playing some of their younger players who don't get much playing time, waiting here 10 to nothing. Loggers put the rush on. The ball popped loose now. It looks like the Grizzlies have recovered it, though. They stripped Morningweg with the ball right there. But it was Rocky Miller, the left tackle, who made the recovery. And the Loggers, with a good defensive play, still do miss a chance to force a big turnover right there. Fusion Sounds one scoring drive was thwarted by a, an interception after the Loggers had gotten the ball themselves on a picked-off pass. A third and 23 now from the 47-yard line. Auger defense has toughened up since that touchdown earlier here in the second quarter by Montana. Morning Waggle put it up. Man is wide open at the 37-yard line. He'll be stopped short of a first down. But a good gain on the play. It was thrown to Kelly Richardson. Well, we mentioned earlier Richardson is a wide receiver as well as a quarterback. So there's one quarterback thrown to another right there. Richardson lined up a wide receiver and made a good grab. He, after running a good pattern, he was wide open on the play. I can't help think that Montana, even though they're dominating this game, or I think they're getting cute a little too early, only leading this game 10 to nothing. They could, they could fool around and end up turning the ball or maybe having a ball picked off and return for a touchdown before the half and get UPS right back in this ball game. Now, Richardson is a bona fide receiver. It's not so much a matter of, of doing something that out of the ordinary. Timeout called now by Montana. They'll have a fourth down and four here. And the Loggers need to stop them right here. As Fusion Sound like to get that ball back if they can. At least on paper going into the season is this part of the schedule they're in right now with games at North Dakota, then the game at home against Cal Poly Pomona, and now this game here at the University of Montana. Now that's not to take anything away from all the other teams the Loggers will face this year. But Puget Sound will have a lot of home games left once the loggers get through this tough stretch, and certainly you've got to regard the University of Montana, the one Division I, 2A team the loggers play this year, as their toughest opponent of the season. Well, uh, they certainly should be. It's just like uh, Texas El Paso. I'm certain they, shouldn't they regard Washington as the toughest team they will face all season because they are a Pac-10 team. I'm sure they do now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know. The season's young. They still have to play BYU. It's hard to, see how many, hard to tell how many points BYU will roll up against it. Morning Wegg has talked it over over on the far side. He's faced with a third and four here. There's a fourth and four here for oh, the fourth, uh, excuse me, it is a fourth, fourth and, and four, four for Montana. I'd say that very probably you'll see a pass here by Montana, especially with thirty two seconds left to go in the half, and now I see the clock is running, so they're probably going to reset it, it looks like. So we have a delay now to reset the clock. Well, I thought this was one of the longest timeouts I had ever seen. Loggers have it now at their own 34. See if they can do something in a hurry right here. They'll have to, trailing 10 to nothing. Kevin Reimer at quarterback. 
They'll throw it long. Man is out there, but it's incomplete. Mike Boss slightly overthrown as he had his defender beaten that time. And Boss did everything he could to get to it, but couldn't quite. Covering on the play was John Kovacic. Very interesting. Boss was parallel with his man when that ball was thrown, but when that ball was thrown, he just put on a burst of speed and got about five yards behind him, but the ball was thrown more to the inside of the field, and he was kind of reined up the outside of the field, and he stumbled and couldn't quite get to the ball. So a second and ten for the Loggers, who now will go from the spread. Dropping back seven yards into the shotgun is Kevin Reimer. The Roosevelt High product will throw to the near side. It's complete and out of bounds at about the 44-yard line with just enough room for a first down as Mike Boss made the grab. He was covered immediately on the play by the uh, cornerback coming over on the right side. Kevin Young. Right now, you can tell uh, Montana's in a pre-vet defense. Their uh, defensive backs are leaning backwards on their heels before the ball is even snapped, trying to <laughs> make sure they get a jump backwards, just to make sure no one gets beat deep in this situation. Augers are just short of the first down, actually. Bring up a third and short. Long count. As Reimer takes a quick, a short drop and tosses it quickly to the near side for a first down. Again, Mike Boss making the reception right in front of the logger bench on the near side. And so the loggers pick up the necessary first down and don't use up much time in doing it. Good they, play good play there to stop the clock. Just an out route. Just picked up the first down. That's all they wanted to do, and they didn't waste any time on the clock either. That's really the obvious play in a third and three with the half running out. The ball just short of midfield. Loggers still have some 50 and a half yards to go before they can strike Pater, trailing 10 0. Reimer now rolling. Throws near side on a comeback pattern, and the catch is made out of bounds. And again, it's Mike Boss coming back to get that one. Good play there by Boss as he saw his quarterback in trouble, and he did the proper thing. He came back to meet the ball. And not only that, but he picked up a first down and stopped the clock, and the UPS drive is still doing. And uh, Montana might have to get out of this prevent defense as they are giving up about 12 yards at a time now, and they're not forcing uh, UPS to run any time off the clock. They might have to go back and start playing a normal defense pretty soon, or UPS is going to get a a cheap field goal at the end of this half and put themselves really right back in the game. A minute and a half left. Augers at the 41 with a second and one from the shotgun. Reimer looks to the far side, now throws to the near side, and the catch is made down around the 20-yard line. Well thrown, and the Augers now will take a timeout. Again, it was Mike Boss. That time, instead of going to the sideline, Boss angled over the middle. And you know, at that point, Jim, Montana had to be looking sideline because that's the direction the loggers had been going. Where they've been going, they've been stopping the clock, and uh, really the Montana defensive backs are uh, kind of giving them a lot of room. They're, they're, they're so paranoid about getting beat deep that they're giving them those, I mean, not just dinky gains, but these are 15, 20-yard gains that they're giving UPS. Well, that one was down yeah. to the 23-yard line where the loggers have a first and 10, and this will be their deepest penetration of the ball game. I believe it really is. They've they, gotten anywhere near this close only one other time, and then, in that case, Rod Ribston was intercepted. And here are the loggers down by 10, trying to put on a late drive here and go into the locker room, not only with points on the scoreboard, but with some much-needed momentum in their direction right now. Well, it's a minute 25 left, so a lot of time. Yeah, a minute 25 left, loggers uh, inside the 25-yard line. I think we've seen the last of the prevent defense this half. I think uh, now uh, the... UPS called a timeout, but Montana, they've called a timeout, too, and I'm sure that they are discussing a new defensive strategy, probably going back to a more conventional zone, or maybe even man-to-man. -man. The loggers don't have as much room to operate now. No, that's true. It will be harder. But still from the 23, certainly. A lot of room yet as Thacker goes to the top of your screen. Split toward the bottom, Mike Boss. From the shotgun, Kevin Reimer. Will look left, still looking, throws the ball back over the middle, and the catch was made, apparently. Yes, it was, on a good effort turned in that time by John Besteman. Besteman is the biggest of the logger receivers at 6'3 and 200 pounds a junior out of Bellevue High. And a good catch by Besteman. The loggers will go quickly now without a huddle. From the shotgun, back to throw. And that one will stop the clock at least. 
I think that was a throwaway as that ball uh, was nowhere near any logger receiver. Mark Thacker was actually running a post pattern it looked like and that ball was just thrown well out of bounds over by the pom-pom girls in the corner of the end zone. I think that was just to stop the clock there. A minute the last... 11 left to go. The loggers are at the 11-yard line with a second and 10 now. Primer will go from behind center this time. He will not go from the shotgun. He'll throw to the far side. And Boss trying to come back for that one. Couldn't quite get there, apparently. Well, Boss was uh, running a motion play. He was uh, starting in from his wide receiver position way out. And then uh, as soon as the ball snapped, he turned up field and then cut across the field in kind of a delay type route. But uh, the strong weak safety picked him up and he was well covered. And that ball, I think, might have been also a throwaway also just to keep it from being intercepted. Now it brings up a third and 10 for UPS. Still a minute five to go in the half. At the 11-yard line, the Loggers have room to get a first down without getting a touchdown, but not much. The pitch will come to the near side, trying to bag me, still on his feet inside the five, but he'll be stopped short of a first down. Bagby with a good gain on the play. Interesting decision coming up here for UPS with a fourth and two, with 59 seconds left to go in the half, whether they should try and kick a field goal and just get back in the game at 10 to three, or maybe just go for a touchdown. This might be maybe their best chance of the day to get a touchdown. But if they try and come away empty, that's going to be a very disheartening way to go into the it locker room, be. and so they'll settle for the yeah. three and very wisely. I think so. so, too, because the percentage of them making two yard while maybe being fairly decent, it will be a major error if they do not make the two yards. It will be a blow to their morale. Definitely, you're right there. Dave Estes will hold as the kick attempt will come from Wade Stevens' toe from probably right around the nine, I would say. It should be a 19-yard attempt coming up here. Loggers get trying to get on the scoreboard, trailing 10 to nothing. Don't completely rule out the possibility of fake here either. Although under these circumstances, I would certainly imagine the Loggers will gladly take the three to pull within seven points. A straight-on kicker is Wade Stevens. You don't see that very often. The snap, a little low, but the kick is up. And the kick for the loggers is no good. He missed that to the right. The snap was fumbled by Estes. It kind of skittered along the ground, and that made Stevens kind of hesitate on his advance on the ball, and he just uh, shanked that ball off the side of his foot and missed it to the right. Now that one is costly to the loggers. The snap perhaps a little low, and Estes... It was definitely mishandled anyway. Got the ball down as quickly as possible, but as you pointed out, Stevens timing thrown off, and the field goal attempt comes up empty for the Loggers. It's still 10-0 Montana, and the Grizzlies now have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Clock down to 56 seconds left, and that one has to hurt. Let's see if Montana will be content to run the clock out or not. Morningweg will pitch it to the far side, breaking through one set of tacklers, spinning his way down with yardage for a first down. That was, uh, guess who? Mr. Eisman strikes right. again. Yes. Big gain there, 19 yards. He now has 70 yards rushing for the game, only in the first half. And Montana's going to call a timeout now, so maybe they might uh, decide to take advantage of UPS being demoralized and put on another score before the end of the half. They certainly have time with 48 seconds left. It was a big chunk of yardage. The ball out to the 33. Certainly that picking up the yardage there, it looks like about an 18-yard gain there. That uh, gives them a chance to uh, probably try and throw the ball and be legitimate about it, not just trying to throw the ball from inside their own 20. That could be kind of dangerous. But now that they're out close to midfield, they can really throw the ball and try and go for some more points, even with a little bit of time left to go in the half with some legitimacy. They're not just taking a big gamble. And it is the 38, not the 33. Markings here are kind of hard to read. I'm sure people can probably see that when they view this game on their TV screen. 48 seconds left. So the loggers now in the position of trying to play prevent. Montana has scored once in each of the first two periods, a field goal in the first quarter, and a short touchdown run on a third and goal from the one. 
for their seven points. And now Morningweg. He's been in there now for the last three series at quarterback after Richardson got both scores on the board. Will hand off on the draw, trying the far side with some good running room right out near a first down on the play. Iceman again. So he has been a workhorse, and it is a warm afternoon he here has. this afternoon, too. 13 carries so far in the first half. He's almost uh, going after Marcus Allen's record of 58 carries in the game, something like that. It is a first down, and Montana will go quickly without a huddle. Morningweg looks left, now throws to the near side, and it's incomplete. Well intended on the near side for a man who was not seeing a whole lot of playing time. Up to this point, it's Scott Moe. Moe, a 5'11 freshman from Missoula. Heard that he's a walk-on, but uh, he must be good if you can be a freshman and walk on and start. 35 seconds left now. Or at least play, anyway, not start. Again, Morningweg will put it up over the middle and almost picked off. The loggers had a lot of men in the vicinity right there. It was intended on the near side for Tim Sundquist. Yeah, Buster Crook was back there, along with a couple other logger defensive backs. It was Larry Smith, one of them. Yeah. Well, and Tom Gunder was also back on the play. Montana now with a third down and a half minute left to go in the half. Third and ten. Morning leg. Straight back. Over the middle and it's picked off. It was intercepted. Yes, it was indeed. That was Todd DeCaret. Todd DeCarteret picks it off. Nice hands by the big linebacker. Usually linebackers don't have hands like that, but he caught that bullet jumping backwards over his head. Carter A was in front, and the Loggers had their secondary men back behind the intended receiver, and Carter A got up well to make the play. Morningwig tried to thread the needle and just didn't quite get the ball high enough is what happened. So the Loggers have it now at the 33-yard line from the shotgun. They're not going to be content just to let the seconds tick away. Reimer gets rid of the ball just as he's hit, and a pass. flag will be thrown on pass interference right there. Defensive back for Montana, that was uh, Reed Madison. He was going for the ball, but he went right through Mike Boss to get at it. And uh, even if you're going for the ball, you can't knock the guy down to get it. So it'll be a first down for the Loggers. Out to the 42-yard line. This may be a little late in this half to do much with it, though. Just 17 seconds left. Certainly a prevent defense would be legitimate in a situation like this with 17 seconds left. No one would question a team going into prevent at this stage of the half. I think you'd question it if they didn't, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, yes, you would. Although, look at what, look what happened to Georgia last year in the Sugar Bowl when they blitzed on third and long and ended up getting a touchdown pass thrown against them. Montana jumps offside, the very obvious offside, although there was no contact on the play, actually. So it'll be an offsides call on the Grizzlies. Now, you would expect at this point that Reimer probably will just go deep and see what he can come up with at this point. I'd say that's probably a pretty good guess. They might try a, a corner route to try and get a deep pass and stop the clock inside the 20-yard line and give their field goal kicker another shot at it. Thacker and Besteman both to the top of your screen. Again, Montana jumps offside, throwing nonetheless to the far side. Thacker has it and will be out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Now, assuming that was offsides on Montana, you know the loggers will decline that. Ten seconds left in the half, and the loggers suddenly within range to perhaps make themselves heard before this half ends yet. Well, they'll get a chance to get at least two more plays off, I would say, with ten seconds left to go. Offside against Montana declined. Being at the 30-yard line there, I think they're a little out of field goal range, but they do have a chance to probably throw the ball up in the end zone twice. This is definitely a throw the ball up in the end zone for grabs play right here. Loggers will go now once again from the shotgun with Bagby at a wing spot to the left as a receiver. Back to throw. 
to the near side. Man is there. He's got it. He's out of bounds. Making the grab for the loggers and then getting out of bounds on the play. Was it Estes? Yeah, it was Dave Estes who got that one. It wasn't. Oh, it was Boss again. Excuse me, it was Mike Boss. Boss got out of bounds with it. Five seconds left. Field goal. And the ball at the 21-yard line, and the no, loggers... Excuse me. <laughs> Not going to try it yet, huh? Well, they have their kicker out there with the T, yes. Official spotted the ball on the wrong hash mark, it looked like. They had it over on the far side of the field. Now they're going to put it where it should be. Oh, I see. It's going to be a measurement. Yeah. All right. I think this will be pretty immaterial, actually, because with five seconds yeah. left. I don't. I really don't understand it, really, other than it <laughs> gives UPS a chance to get their field goal team set up. Although the play was out of bounds, so they'd have a chance anyway. So The kick will come now from the 20, not the 28. Looks like probably 27. So a 37-yard attempt, that's well within Wade Stevens' range. They're going to measure to see if it is a first down, although, as I said, it really won't make any difference. Stevens now two for four on the in field goals. Has hit from 37 and 28, so he's kicked one from this far. Out of the hold of Estes. Ooh, how the loggers would like to get these three points that they were denied earlier up on the board. The snap a good one, the ball is down, and the kick is blocked. So Montana twice blocks longer field goal attempts. That was Malcolm Sorrell who just blew through from the right side of the line and just no one must have touched him because he just went right in there and dove perfectly right in the spot in front of the kicker where you're supposed to block a kick and just stuffed that ball right into the ground. Picked it up and tried to run with it, but he was immediately dropped by the UPS uh, players who uh, leaped okay. off the... Pitched the ball back again. It's Eisman. He's stacked up in the backfield on a fine tackle by the loggers. Back in the backfield. ...trying to force the ball for a complete and end up... ...good field position. So, so far, it's been a third quarter of miscues. The loggers will have the ball at the 43 now as they'll spot it. Smith must have gone out of bounds at that point because he wound up going further downfield, but they'll spot it at the 43. The loggers shift their backs, split behind the quarterback, Reimer. Kevin turns and gives the ball off to the first man through, powering his way down to about the 35-yard line for a gain of some five yards on the play, Les Braxton. Good carry by the logger fullback. Bagby was in for that play, but Ron now comes out to the near sideline on that last logger possession. Bagby got stepped on and tried to make a diving catch. It'll bring up a second down and four now, a gain of six on the play actually for Braxton. And that kind of a running gain for the loggers, more than outclasses their entire first half performance. On second down, a sweep to the far side, another good gain for the loggers on the ground. Again, Braxton Getting wide to the far side. UPS is having a good running game this first half. Part of it is Braxton. Braxton only carried the ball about three times in the first half, picking up six yards, and he certainly has uh, not only eclipsed his own effort, but he eclipsed the entire logger effort for the first half. The ball's at the 28-yard line, so Puget Sound has something going here. Let's see if Reimer keeps it on the ground. Yes, he does. Les Braxton again with some good power running on the right side of the line. Les who had a nice article written about him by Jack Seralt in the News Tribune, pointing out he had a broken leg in his last high school game. As Braxton was a fine running back in the City League then for Lincoln. Les has battled a lot of leg problems since then, but some good running here as Bagby. Let's see, is it Bagby checking back in or not? Yes, it is. Bagby and Braxton behind the quarterback. Reimer will throw now, dropping back, rolling out, throws to a man coming back to make the catch as Boss is there to haul it in. Mike steps out of bounds, a short gain on the play. UPS, I think, found out in that, those two drives in the, the end of the second half that they can uh, throw those, uh, that they can run those uh, defensive backs for Montana off and then come back and meet the ball and pick up a decent gain, and they've been do executing that play very successfully since then. A curl pattern has worked well for them. Estes checks in now. Dable's put wide to the far side. That's the long side of the field. 
and the near side, the short side, is Boss. Again, the loggers go from the shotgun, or spread formation, as they call it. Reimer will throw the ball over the middle right there to make the catch, and down to about the 10-yard line for the loggers. Making the grab, uh, yeah, coming out of the backfield that time was Bagby. I'll tell you, Reimer really zinged that ball in there. It will be. Did I say the 10-yard line? I should have said the 20-yard line, and they'll be short of a first down. And so the loggers will try a field goal here. Field goal will come the 27 or 8. It'll be a 38-yard attempt. Estes puts the ball down. The kick this time is up, and this time the kick is good. So the loggers are on the scoreboard. After failing in two late field goal attempts, they moved the ball pretty well on that drive, Jim. After the interception, and good run back set it up for the loggers. The interception by uh, Darren Smith. The loggers get three points on the scoreboard, and now are within a touchdown and an extra point. As with time out here and the clock in Montana, showing 7.26 left in the third quarter, the loggers are back in it, despite some disheartening developments late in that second quarter. Here in the third period, it's now Montana 10 and the University of Puget Sound Loggers three. Here comes a big defensive series for the Loggers now. If Puget Sound could keep Montana from staging any kind of a major offensive attack, the Loggers could really get back in things here. Certainly, if they're going to stop uh, Montana, they are going to have to stop Greg Eisman, who has rushed now for 89 yards for the game and is uh, by far and away the, the star rusher for the Montana attack and really the person, I think, that makes the Montana passing attack go such as it is. Now maybe the loggers Wade Stevens, after having two field goal attempts blocked, or one blocked, actually, and one on a low staff, no good, will give the loggers a good kickoff here and keep Montana deep in its own territory. The kick that was going to bounce to about the five-yard line, picked up there, coming back up the near side, out to the 10-yard line, to the 15, and stacked up short of the 20. It was a low-line drive kick returned by uh, Young. Kevin Young, the 5'11", 170-pound junior cornerback. He's from Toledo, Ohio, as Montana is uh, stretching far and wide in their recruiting drives. So first and ten for Montana. Quarterback will still be, no, it isn't Richardson. It's uh, more in the wagon there as the handoff comes for a run for good yardage, good running room indeed. Kurt McGinnis. Kurt McGinnis, his first carry of the afternoon. So McGinnis with a fine gain, a first down out to the 35. And it'll be a first and 10 for Montana. Grizzlies from the eye will give it again to the tailback. Eisman with very short yardage, two, maybe three yards, but that's about it. No well, again now. It's going to be McGinnis in there. So McGinnis running out of that tailback spot. He's a junior. from Janesville, Minnesota, junior college transfer in his first year here at Montana. He'll now leave the lineup. It'll be a second down, second and eight. On a long count. Handoff comes to tailback. Good block to spring him free. There's trouble for the loggers to the 40. The 30 could go all the way, and he is gone. A touchdown by McGinnis. Kurt McGinnis got the big block he needed, but wait, is there a flag? There is a flag, and it's going to be a holding call on Montana to call it back. A break for the loggers. That's there was one big block that really did spring McGinnis. But the holding call will bring it back, and I'll tell you the loggers, if they had any questions about officiating in the first half, will be quieted with that call right there to wipe out a seeming touchdown for Montana. 
that would have spanned some 65 yards. Certainly would have been a big play for Montana, probably even a back-breaking touchdown for them, but there's only six minutes and four seconds left to go in the third quarter as Montana has been chewing up a lot of time in this quarter by keeping the ball on the ground. Then McGinnis has really sparkled. He got that one big block, and then talk about acceleration. He really kicked it in. He almost cut Iceman on one play in total yardage rushing for the game. So it'll be a second down and long now, second and 18. And the ball put down back at the 28-yard line. Morning wag. They'll drop back, faking the draw. He's going to throw, looking deep. He's hit just as he lets go of it. And it'll be an incomplete pass. Boy, the loggers nailed him just as he let go of the ball. A couple of loggers in there on the defense. A couple of the interior linemen. There was uh, Joe Rubel, defensive end, and also Jeff Walters, linebacker, were in on the play. Walters started this afternoon for the loggers. Scott Stolzenberg, who started last week at strong linebacker, slid over again to his quick linebacker spot. Start in place of Todd DeCarteret, who's been in on a couple of good plays for the loggers also this afternoon. So a third and long now, third and 18. The ball at the 28. Loggers trailing 10 to 3. Morning Wag, the junior from San Jose, rolls out. Now hands off for the draw on the spread out draw. Pretty good running room, but stacked up well short of the first down on the play. That was McGinnis again. Brought down on uh, Scott Skolzenberg, who uh, came across the field to make that tackle. I'll tell you one thing, the Grizzlies have shown us some depth at tailback and running back, fullback spots this afternoon. Well, they certainly have, especially at tailback, as uh, Eisberg, as, uh, who is in there now, would be in the up back on the punt, so he has not hurt. He is not out of the line because he's hurt. They just decided to give him a little rest, as he has carried the ball for about 15 times on a very hot day. The kick not quite as far as some of the earlier ones, as the Loggers will hand the ball off now on and around, coming around... Uh, to get the ball to the 20-yard line, and that's about it on the play for the loggers, will be uh, Smith, Larry Smith. As that time, Bagby took the kick and handed it off to Smith. Well, that was reminiscent of last year for a moment there at Davis when the loggers actually handed the ball off to their outstanding nose guard, who's now an assistant coach with them, a guy who is one of the loggers' all-time great athletes, Bob Jackson, to set up the one touchdown in the 7-0 logger win. And Puget Sound hoped for some of that right there, but to no avail. Still a quarterback for the loggers. It'll be Kevin Reimer as it's a first and 10 for Puget Sound at the 15-yard line. Reimer, give the ball off to the tailback, Bagby, with just a couple. Short gain for the logger tailback. Loggers, at least, are going a bit more this time to their uh, tailback, to their running backs overall. That was actually Donnie Moore, by the way, and not the uh, regular starting quarterback, Bagby. Ron, I think, is a little banged up right now, and there he comes into the lineup. Bagby in replacing Moore. Don, the little man at 5-6. Augers will send Bestman to the top of your screen. Boss to the short side of the field, to the bottom of your screen. Reimer back to throw. Throws one to the far side, and it's incomplete. Under throwing Bestman out around the 30. Good defense applied that time. Phelps, the tight end out there also. Yeah, Reimer tried to throw into double coverage there, and really Mike Boss was pretty open coming across from the from the near side of the field, running a curl, backside curl route, but Reimer didn't see him and tried to throw into double coverage, and an incompletion is what resulted. At the 21-yard line now, the Loggers will have a third down, third and nine with 4-11 left to go. So Montana looking for the pass. Loggers will not shift this time into the, uh, the shotgun. Reimer almost blindsided, throws wide open over the middle. Trying to cut back on the play is Bagby after making the catch, and a flag is down on the uh, run after the reception. And once again, the Montana linebackers have failed to pick up the running back coming out of the backfield. He was wide open on that play. Unfortunately, one of the safety men was coming over to keep him from running for an easy first down. He tried to cut back across the field and ended up, after running backwards five yards, getting back to where he caught the ball originally. So the loggers will kick. They get the kicking unit in there quickly. A flag went down, but I didn't see any discussion anywhere. Probably inadvertent. As Stevens will get the kick to the far side where a fair catch is called for and is made at the 40-yard line. A 33-yard punt there by Stevens. 
there's virtually no wind at all here in Montana this afternoon. Just a beautiful day in Missoula after hearing about two feet of snow around these parts of the country. On about Monday or Tuesday, we had visions of white Christmas, but instead it's been more Indian summer. A 10-3 ball game, Montana leads it. The Grizzlies have the ball now at the 40-yard line of first and 10. With 3.28 left to go in the third quarter, the Loggers have put the only three points on the scoreboard in this third quarter. Morning Wegg will continue at quarterback. He'll fake the ball, back to throw, over the middle, almost intercepted, and instead the ball is complete, out to midfield and falling ahead to the 40. The Loggers went for the interception, and thus the pass was complete on the play to the tight end coming over the middle. Salonen made the grab. That was a strong safety on that play who tried for the interception as UPS really has to try for the interception now and try and make a big play and get some uh, get something uh, going in this game as their offense has failed to generate much. In, in the spirit of good broadcasting disagreement, I don't agree with you. I think the loggers can just play good defense right here with a lot of time left. They'll be the up back on punts. And we'll see if that becomes a factor in the fourth quarter if Eisman perhaps is just getting some rest to come back in. A big third and seven here now from the 38-yard line. Loggers really want to hold here and get their hands back on that football. Morning wag. Pitches the ball back to uh, McGinnis, who tries to come left, doesn't have any room there, goes back right, and will have a first down. Boy, the Loggers have McGinnis pet up and seemingly nailed for a loss, and instead he comes back the other direction and picks up a big first down right there. Hey, the way McGinnis was clutching that ball in one hand, I think he might have been trying to throw an option pass, much the same way that Iceman did earlier in the game, but there was no one open, or at least he, uh, there he was getting pressure, so he just pulled the ball down and ran for a gain, much like uh, Jim Zorn used to do for the Seahawks. Used to do, I love it. <laughs> they haven't struck yet. But Zorn hasn't played yet either. All right, a first and ten. Give comes to the tailback. The loggers have him stacked up this time, though. See, is it McGinnis again? Mike Helene. Mike Helene. Oh, actually, that's how it looks. <laughs> it's Helen. Helen. They're not. H e l e a n. He's a six-foot sophomore out of Missoula. Montana using a lot of running backs right now. Loss of two on the play brings up a second down and 12 now. The ball will be at the 30-yard line of the loggers, at the 30. Backs in an eye. Morning wag. Will throw it. Here comes the logger rush. He avoids one man, but bounces off another, still on his feet. Got rid of the ball and threw it away. Boy, I'll tell you, morning wag. The old Houdini number right there. The loggers twice had him in the backfield. This time under pressure, he did not throw an interception, just threw the ball away, a receiver close enough that it's by no means any threat of a grounding penalty. Yeah, well, Greg Hyden had a chance to get him, and also Joe Heron had a chance to get him, but Morningway got away, and actually it's his ankle is being grabbed, threw the ball away, and, uh, well, he got it within 10 yards of a Montana player, so that's maybe how he avoided getting an intentional grounding play, as it looked to me like he was really just throwing the ball away to avoid the loss. Another big third down, now a third and 12 at the 30. A first down here in Montana would be within field goal range, so the loggers really want to stop them. Puget Sound trailing 10 to 3. Fake pitch. As rolling to the far side, the throw will be complete, but will be short of a first down. So Eisman is back in the lineup now. It'll bring up a fourth down. Fourth and five from the about the 24 field goal units in for Montana. Now we've been told Montana likes to fake kicks. Dean Rominger will try it out of the hole to one of the quarterbacks, Kelly Richardson. The spot will come from the 29, or I guess right at the 30 actually, a 40 yard attempt, the straight on attempt. Short. And the kick will be short and no good. So the loggers have held and we'll get the ball back now in some decent field position. As Puget Sound's offense will come on the on the field now after much hand slapping, Joe Rubel leading the cheering squad as the longer defense comes off the field. Ian Buster Crook with the high five as 
The Logger defense turns the ball over to the offense as we head now to the fourth quarter. That's the end of our third quarter football from Missoula. The Loggers do the only scoring in the third quarter as our score after three is the University of Montana 10, the University of Puget Sound Loggers 3. Art Popham and Jim Bernard back with you from Missoula, Montana on a beautiful afternoon where the University of Montana, which led 10 to nothing at the half, now leads 10 to 3 as we head down to our final 15 minutes of football. And Jim, the Loggers certainly held their own and I would have to say were the dominant team in that third quarter. I'd say they were also. Uh, certainly uh, UPS, despite uh, having some problems, uh, especially stopping the Montana running game, really have, have a real good chance of winning this game, trailing only 10 to 3 with 15 minutes, a lot of time left to play, especially the way they've been able to pick Montana's secondary apart with the short passing game, and especially Mike Boss, who has done a real good job running curls and outs. It's been interesting how one quarterback has had a better week than the other each week. The first week, late in the game against North Dakota, it was... Uh, coming in off the bench, do a great job late in the ballgame, Drimston. Then last week, each quarterback seemed to have a good half, and this afternoon, Kevin Reimer really has had the better day of the two. As on the first play, faking into the line, the throw goes to the far side, and it's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. It's Les Braxton there. Loggers tried to swing that ball to Braxton out wide, and Les could not find the handle on it. So it'll be a second and ten now for Puget Sound. The Loggers, as we check the wind will not have any advantage there in this fourth quarter at all. The wind has actually picked up now and is blowing in their face. Wind is blowing right into the face of the loggers, and indeed, Jim, as you said, it has picked up significantly, the hardest it's been blowing all afternoon. Loggers will go from the shotgun. Reimer fumbles the snap, has to go back and gets a fortuitous bounce. He'll throw the ball to the near sideline, and he threw right into the logger bench. I'm not sure if the catch was made or not. No, it was not. Was it thrown low? Okay. It was thrown low, yeah. Bounced about a foot in front of John Bestiman there. And actually, uh, really, if uh, the throw would have been accurate, the loggers could have got a completion there and picked up about eight yards, as Bestiman did have his man beat on the short route once again. Well, that could have been tragedy, though, had the ball not bounced back up to Kevin Reimer. So it's a third and ten now from the 24. Wide at the far side of the field, the loggers send Mike Boss. He's got a lot of operating room out there. Backs are split wide behind Reimer. Kevin? Looks, throws over the middle, and it's just in and out of the hands of Ron Bagby. Bagby had some room right there, too. Loggers have been running that play very successfully, although that was an incomplete, so I guess you can't call that a success, but Bagby was once again open coming out of the backfield. Once again, the linebackers have failed to pick him up. And again, the Loggers will call on Wade Stevens, needing a good punt right here. Wade stands back around his own 10. The snap is a good one, and the kick is a sailing kick that will be a good one also, taken on the near side. Nice initial block, but the loggers fight off that block well and cover the kick at the 31-yard line. Rob Jones was the returner on that kick, a 5'11 defensive back, 180-pound junior from Oakland, California. So the logger defense back on the field, but wait, there's a penalty now. kicker still out there so it probably will be against uh, the loggers I would think Montana would welcome a chance to replay that kick right no here but comes the Montana offense on the field so apparently the penalty was on Montana because the loggers like that play to stand they don't want I don't think have to kick again even if they were to get another five yards All right, it is a first and ten for the Grizzlies. Ball's at the 32-yard line with a lot of time left in this ball game. 14 and a half minutes remaining. Richardson is back at quarterback, and Eisman back at the tailback spot. Richardson will fake the ball. Back to throw. Swings it far side. The ball is caught at the 33 for a short gain. Out to about the 35 or so as Eisman it's been a good all-purpose man. Is it morning, Mike? Excuse me, it is morning, Wag. I got my numbers backwards. Morning, Wag, wearing number 11. And Richardson, number 12. Morning, Wag, it was still in there at quarterback. Eisman making the catch. Morning, Wig, not having a very successful day as he is only 4 out of 14 on the afternoon with one interception. That was good for just three yards. And a second and seven now from the 35. 
Backs behind him in an eye. Morning Wag will drop back to throw. Again, he sprints out. He's going to keep the football. Avoids one man, but a good trip-up tackle executed by the loggers that time. Just getting a hand out there. That was John Heron who made a good effort as he ran Morning Wig down from behind and finally got a hold of the leg and uh, really wrestled him to the ground. Heron made a big fumble recovery last week for the loggers. Loggers with several people in there uh, not in the starting lineup, but showing some depth there and a good tackle executed right there. Looks like we're up gonna, on the play, though, some six yards. Very close to a first down. We're going to have a measurement now. They'll bring the chains all the way over from the far side. Again, the loggers next week will be on the road once again, going to Cal State Hayward in the Bay Area. They'll be home the following Saturday, first Saturday in October, as they'll be facing Humboldt State. Our college game next Saturday here on C-10. We'll have the Pacific Lutheran University Knights of head coach Frosty Westring going up against Southern Oregon. Interesting why they'd call for a measurement there as that ball was a good yard short of the first down. So a third and one coming up. The ball still in the territory of the Grizzlies. It'll be at their 41. Let's see to whom they'll give the ball, trying to gain that one yard for the first down. Morning Wag will take it himself and ram forward for the first down. It's the first quarterback sneak of the day, and Morning Wag picked up the first down yardage with some despair. Well, that's the surest way to do it. Certainly is. It's usually that play is good for a yard most of the time, as uh, you don't have to worry about, at least you don't have to worry about losing yardage there. Morning Wade got more than that. He inches it just across the 45. First and 10. Morning Wag. Give the ball off to Eisman. And Eisman has good running room. He's across midfield. Good quick acceleration, getting the ball down to the 48-yard line before Buster Crook finally got there to make the stop. Along with John Heron again. Heron is a 6'3 freshman out of Eisenhower High School in Yakima. Playing very well here in the second half. All right, now Montana is moving, and the Loggers can ill afford that. Puget Sound trails here by a score of 10-3. to 3. 12 and a half minutes left, a lot of time. Handoff for a run just off the right side. Stacked up after a short gain on the play. Both teams making a lot of substitutions. The loggers changing three players a time the last couple of plays. It'll be another third and short for Montana. A third and one. The ball at the logger, 46. And again, a big third down play. Montana moving through the, or rather on the ground very well right now. They kept it, kept it on the ground to eat up some clock. And now apparently Montana will re-huddle. I thought perhaps they were going to call a timeout, but they'll re-huddle. And they better hurry. I would think so. Third and one. See if Morning Wag will try to do it himself again here. He does. And again, he picks up a first down. Boy, Morning Wag twice has picked up two, even three yards more than he's needed to get that first down. Yes, he certainly uh, didn't run that ball like a normal quarterback, just kind of trying to fall forward to pick up the first down. He ran that ball and did pick up about three, four yards as much as he possibly could. He's not afraid to take a hit. Loggers bring Dan Diltz into the ball game. He's a 6'6 junior from Walla Walla. First and 10, Montana marching right now and eating up clock doing it. Grizzlies leading by seven in the fourth quarter. Again, handoff comes to the uh, running back, and the loggers are there to meet that one solidly. Logger defense will stack Montana up for a couple of yards. From the 41-yard line, it'll be second down.
time it hasn't gone to the air. I can remember in the last nine plays anyway, I would say. They pitch the ball out to McGinnis. He spins around one man and will have good running yardage down to the 30-yard line. The flag down after the play. And Probably a late hit. That's never good if you're on defense. No. It's usually what it is. Certainly Montana has not gone to the air because they've really been running the ball quite successfully. When you have the lead and you can run the ball and move it and pick up the first downs, there's really no reason to go to the air. Especially, especially for a team like Montana who has uh, traditionally relied on the run. And they certainly do outsize the loggers. Yes. Well, they have physically dominated the loggers in the game, but the loggers have been... Uh, tough and kept on scrapping and have really kept the game close and still if they can stop Montana on this drive maybe hold them to only a field goal we'll still have a legitimate chance of uh, winning this game the ball though will be put down now inside the 20 yard line at the 19 a first and 10 for Montana at the longer 19 and Puget Sound needs a big defensive play right here and the loggers want to call a timeout as the loggers were just breaking their defensive huddle as Montana came to the line of scrimmage. Well, the loggers this afternoon have had two interceptions. Montana has not given the logger secondary a chance at a ball this afternoon here in the, this particular drive. I have uh, loggers, yes, the loggers have picked off two passes. That is right. Certainly, uh, Westring is right out there on the field now, exhorting his troops, trying to probably get him a little fired up and try and stop this running game. Simonson. Simonson. Next week right, it's right. Westring. Westring. All right. <laughs> That's next week. That's right. We cover both Tacoma area colleges here on C10. And next week it'll be Frosty Westring's PLU Lutes going up against Southern Oregon. That's really, uh, there's... Hard to say what type of defensive changes the loggers could do. Really, all it is right now is Montana just running the ball right down their throats, and uh, all the thing they have to do is just uh, not be physically dominated by the other team, but that, that's a little hard to make coaching changes to stop that if the other team's a lot bigger than you are. It's been a warm afternoon. I think warmer perhaps than the loggers expected, and again, we want to mention a very early day for the University of Puget Sound today. Most people getting up around 4.30 or 5 o'clock to make a 7 a.m. flight over here. Perhaps that taking a bit of a toll right now, too. That could be, and also the smaller people on a hot day getting beat on all day are going to wear out faster. That is just inevitable. Yeah. First and 10 from the 19. Morning Wag will pitch the ball back. A good hole up the middle. McGinnis angling to the far side, and he's headed for the goal line. He's in. McGinnis had a big hole and then ran for the, to the daylight. Well, Guinness uh, took that ball off tackle and then had uh, Larry Smith was cutting him off to the end zone, so he cut across the field and actually outran the defensive back to the far side of the field as Smith tried to make a diving one-handed stop to grabbing McGinnis' shirt, but he couldn't do it. McGinnis then had a clear path five yards right into the end zone. And the log and the um, Grizzlies now lead by a score of 16 to 3. Kurt McGinnis, a 6'2 junior. He's out of Janesville, Minnesota. Had that touchdown run of 65 yards called back earlier, but that one of 19 certainly will hurt the loggers' comeback attempt. Now the kick is up, and the kick is good. So in the fourth quarter now, with 10 minutes and 15 seconds left, our score is the University of Montana Grizzlies 17, the University of Puget Sound loggers 3. Montana had a field goal in the first quarter, a touchdown in the second quarter. The loggers failed to execute two field goal attempts, had a fourth and two from the three-yard line, and didn't get any points out of that. Then the loggers got a field goal from Wade Stevens in the third quarter. But here in the fourth period, Montana, with a good, long, sustained ground attack, and I do mean a ground attack, scores their second touchdown of the game. And the loggers now trail 14 to three and have to hope it will not again be a period where just one score is put on the board because Puget Sound is down by two touchdowns. And the loggers will have to get it going now. Well, McGinnis got the glory on the touchdown run on that drive, but you shouldn't forget Morning, Morning Way's uh, two quarterback sneaks on fourth and one to keep that drive alive as those were very big plays. All right, Rominger will kick it off now.
Matt Thacker is back deep for Puget Sound. And so is Ron Bagby. Bagby on the far side. Thacker nearer you. Rominger. Waiting the signal. Loggers actually moved the ball better in the third quarter than did Montana. But the Grizzlies capped off that fine drive. And speaking of fine, Rominger really booms that ball into the end zone where Thacker will down it. So the Loggers will go from their 20 now. Certainly an important drive for UPS with 10 minutes to go. They certainly uh, will. They have to score two touchdowns, and they might as well uh, get it going as soon as they possibly can. I'd say that uh, really the curl in and the out passes work for them all day. Kevin Reimer's coming in. He's had a good day throwing the ball, and I think they should just start right out throwing the ball. And well, the probably Hawkers look for Mike Boss, too. Don't have to go for the bomb, not at this no, point. No, just work it up the field. If they score with, like, even two minutes left to go, they have a good shot at winning if they can execute an onside kick. Reimer will swing it near side and throws it behind his intended receiver coming out of the backfield. Unable to get there, Ron Bagby, as the ball was thrown behind him. Dave Estes brings in a play from the sideline. That was Todd McGrady, actually. McGrady didn't figure to play much with a sprained ankle, was the man who was the intended receiver on that pass. They'll try to swing another pass, and this one is batted down. That was uh, Cliff Lewis once again knocking that ball down. As Lewis, who is uh, six feet and 200 pounds, has uh, shown some pretty good leaping ability. As I said, that's about the third or fourth pass that he's knocked down at the line of scrimmage already today. Now Lewis, along with Tacoma's uh, Markham Sorrell, or Malcolm Sorrell, pardon me, out of Mount Tahoma, certainly sparkled defensively for uh, for University of Montana. It's a third down now for the Loggers. Third and ten from the 20. Reimer on a long count. Straight back to throw. He'll throw one long to the near side, and it'll be caught by Thacker. He could be gone down the near sideline. He'll go all the way. Well, you can give Kevin Young of Montana just as much credit for that touchdown as Young tried to cut in front and make the interception rather than wait for Thacker to catch the ball and drive him out of bounds. And when you gamble, you can either make a big play. If Young would have picked that off, it could have been six for Montana just as well. But instead, UPS is right back in the ball game, and there's still nine minutes and 57 seconds left to go in this game, so they really have a pretty good shot of winning this game. The long play of the year right there, an 80-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Reimer to Matt Thacker. And the Loggers are indeed right back in it. And as Jim described, because the quarterback went for it all, he came away and said with nothing. And I think if he had to do it again with his team up by 14 prior to that play, he wouldn't do that again. The kick is up. The kick is good. A big extra point for the Loggers because they're back within seven. Puget Sound with its first touchdown of the afternoon. And that, if the Loggers have had some down moments, has to be a tremendous up moment right there for Puget Sound. As the Loggers... Now with a total of 9.57 left in this ballgame, a world of time, trail Montana by a score of 17 to 10. Well, certainly the loggers are back in the ball game, but whether they can win it or not really depends upon their defense. As their defense really looked like they were wearing down rapidly on that last drive, and they have to stop Montana, because if they can't, Montana's just going to take that ball and run it off tackle left, off tackle right, probably giving it to Eisman, more likely, although McGinnis has started to pick up some slack also, giving Eisman a rest, and they'll just march the ball right down the field and probably score another touchdown, if not just run the game out. A change now for Montana, as back deep now is... Uh... Joey Charles. Charles to the near side. As he checks in, replacing Kevin Young. So it'll be Charles back along with Ted Ray and Wade Stevens. Talking it over right now. I certainly wouldn't think the loggers, with practically 10 minutes left, would start thinking on sides kick at this point. It would certainly be, a, so they would do it more for surprise value than out of necessity. Now the wind has calmed down once again. It's been a gusty afternoon. This stadium sits right in a valley surrounded by mountains. And the wind, I'm sure, can kick up in a hurry blowing down those hills, just as the loggers have kicked up in a hurry here to get back within seven. 
All right, Stevens to kick it off. Charles to the near side, Ray the far side back deep. As the kick will come to the far side to Ray, the freshman, back up to the 15, to the 20, out to the 25-yard line, still on his feet, angling to the far side. He's to the 30-yard line, and out of bounds on his own sidelines, out across the 30, and a fine return right there. Certainly was, uh, as Ray uh, returned up the middle, then was blocked off and cut to the outside. Richard LaMonica was the one who knocked uh, Ray out of bounds on that play. All right, now the loggers did not do a very good job of covering their kickoff right there. Of course, give credit to Ray for a good return. He broke a couple of tackles, so that helped a lot. Now the loggers cannot afford to have that happen to them. From the 30-yard line, Morning Wag. His back's behind him in an eye. Will pitch the ball back to Eisman, trying the far side. And he's got about three, four yards before he's dragged down over on the far side. What the loggers really cannot afford to do is to let Eisman rattle off four yards of carry right now. Picked up about three there. They'll spot the ball on the 34-yard line, where it's a second and seven. That's 99 yards on the day for Greg Eisman on 17 carries. Well, he's been the workhorse, and he had a couple of other guys who made some big plays. Joe Kluswich in the first half picked up a couple of fourth downs, and then McGinnis had that 19-yard touchdown run. Back to throw for the first time. Morningwick swings it near side. The ball is caught at the 40-yard line and out of bounds on the logger side at the 43. A swing pass to the near side caught by McGinnis. So Montana abandons the running game, but they do pick up a first down. However, McGinnis running out of bounds there did stop the clock. Pretty safe pass, though, throwing to McGinnis. Certainly is. It's not a risky pass. It's just that the only thing is it did is it stopped the clock, and really their idea right now is they're trying to keep the clock moving, although they just can't afford to sit on the clock, e sit on the ball either with the nine minutes to go and only leading by seven points. They're not quite to that stage. To the 46. And the McGinnis are running ball the ball for... Uh, Montana. So I guess Montana's deciding to go with what's successful for him as uh, Eisman is probably playing fullback now with McGinnis playing tailback. Eisman originally listed as a fullback. Fullback is Eisman's natural position. It'll be a second down now, second and six. Ball at the 46 yard line, still in Grizzly territory. Again from the eye. Morning Wag will pitch the ball back. McGinnis is going to throw to the near side. It's out, or the far side, rather, and it's batted down. So the halfback pass. Very, very poor throw there by McGinnis, as uh, that was uh, Tom Gunder, who was uh, covering on the play. Really, uh, Montana once again tried to get a little cute there, and they almost paid for it by turning the ball over after they've been running the ball very successfully. Interesting. They would try to go to Razzle Dazzle in this particular spot. Throwing some, I can see. Yeah. But now it's a third and six at the 46, and per perhaps they have to throw now, although they haven't really thrown in situations like this. Eisman and McGinnis behind Morning Wag. Morning Wag will throw. No, instead he hands it off on a draw that stacked up well short of the first down, right about the line of scrimmage. That was, oh, was that Joey Charles? Joey yeah, Charles. Charles. It was. So Charles, who was listed originally as the number one tailback on his first carry of the day, is stacked up, and now the uh, loggers will get their hands on the football. Romans, you're back to kick. Bagby back deep for Puget Sound in single uh, safety. The kick, very high spiral. Bagby will back up, call for a fair catch, and will make the fair catch way back deep. And the loggers will have the ball deep in their own territory. Interesting choice of fair catching the ball inside your own 10, as that was about a 46-yard punt there by Rominger. So with 7.34 left, the loggers will have the ball at the 10-yard line. 90 yards away from a tying score. They trail by a score right now of 17 to 10. Calling the signals, Kevin Reimer. Kevin on the long count. Is back to throw. Quickly to the far side. Mike Boss once again. Boss picks up about five. Now, again, that's the pattern that's been so successful for the loggers, the yeah. sidelines, and the particular...
particular with the curls coming back toward the line of scrimmage. And running along the sidelines also as uh, they seem to be giving them a lot of room to the outside. From the far hash mark now, a second and five for the loggers from the 15. Reimer, again, a short drop, a quick throw to the far side, and again, the ball is caught and out of bounds. So the loggers, with good success, twice going to boss on the far side, pick up a first down. And what you keep waiting for, Jim, is one of two things. Either Montana to start stepping in front, anticipating, or the loggers to throw one long down the sidelines to a guy like Boss or Thacker. I think uh, maybe Montana might have learned their lesson about anticipating on that last play where Thacker got a touchdown on what would have normally been about a 20-yard gain, but certainly a pump fake and then a bomb would be a good play for UPS here. Loggers have the speed at wide receiver. All right, it's a first and 10 for Puget Sound. Reimer. Long count. Again, the short drop. Again to the far side. And the ball underthrown. But Boss made a good catch. Boss reaching down low after it. Yeah, Mike has that great combination of the good hands and the speed. Yeah. And uh, John Kovich, the defensive back for uh, Montana, was giving Boss a lot of room as he was staying about seven yards away from uh, behind Mike Boss on that play, just uh, making sure he didn't get beat for a long pass. And they're giving UPS the short passes, and there's still six minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the half. Loggers are trailing 17-10 here. Reimers, Plenty of time left in this fourth quarter. Reimers completed four passes in a row now. One of them was for a touchdown. The other three have been for about little four-yard gains apiece, those little out routes. That last one picked up seven, a second and three for the Loggers at the 30. And remember, they started way back at their own 10, so at least they've gotten out of the hole now. But at this point, the Loggers aren't thinking field position. They're thinking about a long drive to pull back even. Well, they're running kind of a San Francisco 49ers ball control pass attack. It's what uh, a lot of people call the 49ers when they control the ball. What they're doing is they're executing long handoffs. Reimers talked it over with his coach, Ron Simonson, on the near side. Now the loggers will send two receivers to the near side. Thacker is inside of Boss. There's a couple of real speed burners to the near side. Back to throw. The ball is oh. tipped. Intercepted! Still on his feet, inside the 10, and he'll score. Tough break for the loggers. There is Tony Fudge, the six foot two strong safety, who is back in a zone, really not covering anyone. Uh, the ball was thrown behind the intended receiver, but just standing there and caught the ball. It was probably just as surprised as anyone as the ball hit him in the chest, paused for a couple of seconds to look what he caught, and then took off down the sidelines and scored. I think all the loggers can say about that is, oh, Fudge, because yeah. Fudge's interception and touchdown gives Montana a 13-point lead now with the point after coming up. Good line. Certainly a tough break for the loggers as they were moving the ball down uh, for those short passes. And you were saying anticipating the call and maybe picking one off for a touchdown. Well, there he really didn't anticipate the call. He was just standing there and the ball was thrown right to him. I thought the pass was tipped myself. Did you think someone got a hand on it? It might have been. It was I certainly it was. a wobbly ball. It I was it... thrown poorly behind the receiver. The kick by Rominger is good. So can the loggers come back another time? With 6.39 left in the ball game, our score is Montana 24, the University of Puget Sound Loggers 10, as the Loggers have to battle them back one more time. Well, the Loggers with 6 minutes and 39 seconds to go, they might have to start going for a little more than those uh, short five-yard outs now when they pass the ball. They, might, they don't have to go for the bomb yet, obviously, but they might try and do some post routes, some corner routes, something to pick up about 15, 20 yards a game, as they can't really... Uh, go to the ball control passing attack to drive down the field anymore is there uh, two touchdowns behind probably I would say go for two if they get if they do get their two touchdowns they would not go for a tie we'll see if that becomes a factor it's hopefully it's, it will it's pure speculation at this point although battling teams have when they've battled down from two or three touchdowns late in the game have gone for ties figuring that's pretty good Bagby and Thacker back deep Fudge, you'll recall, made that big interception on the Loggers' first potential scoring drive, thwarting it way back in the first quarter. Rominger's kick will again go very deep into the end zone. That was almost a field goal, as a matter of fact. Rominger really got a toe into that one. Had a very stiff breeze behind him there, too, as the wind is really kicking up those flags now. And he's kicked very well this afternoon. And he has a good foot. And we're also at about 35-foot elevation, which also uh, doesn't hinder uh, kicking. 
All right, Kevin Reimer back on the field. Augers will start at their 20, trailing by 14 points. Augers trailed by a score of 10 to nothing at halftime. They've been outscored here uh, 14 to 10 in the uh, second half as the throw goes to the far side, thrown behind Mike Boss and incomplete. So it'll be a second and 10 now and Dave Estes brings in the play from the sidelines. Backs are split behind the quarterback. Reimer pumps once, now throws back up the middle. And incomplete, Estes with the diving attempt. It's the type of routes that UPS needs to do now. They need to do those long curls and post routes and long corners. But uh, it was a good idea, just a little bit bad execution there. The ball seemed to slip off of Reimer's hand a little bit there into the dirt. Matt Thacker, who caught that long touchdown pass for the Loggers, an 80-yarder that got Fusion Sound right back in it, comes back in the ball game. The interception by Tony Fudge, and the run back for a score has put Montana back on top by 14 here late in the ball game. Now, now the Loggers go back to the shotgun, an element that worked very well for them earlier. Kind of surprised they hadn't used it, in fact, a bit before this. Reimer back to throw, just avoids the rush, but can't get away from the second man. The fumble. And Montana has it. So the loggers backs against the wall, guilty of a couple of miscues. Looked like uh, Reimer, what he did is he, avo he avoided the tackle, and the man that he stepped aside to avoid the tackle reached back and actually ripped the ball out of his hand as he was holding it, as he was, Reimer was trying to step into the pocket and throw the ball. And there was a man in the backfield. So Montana the now. Ball for Montana. Montana with a chance to put it away. They have it at the logger eight-yard line. It'll be a first and goal with the eight. 6.25 left to go, and I want to tell you, from seven to six has not been a lucky time for the loggers on the clock because Montana has really made a couple of big defensive plays, forcing two key turnovers. Morning Weg will throw for it. The ball is caught short of the goal line and run out of bounds. But getting down very close to the touchdown. Making the grab was the tight end that time. It was Salonen who made the catch and was driven out of bounds, just short of the flag. And not only has this been an unlucky time for the loggers, but it's also been about the longest 40 seconds in college football history. I kept looking at the clock thinking it had to be further along than that because so much had happened, but it wasn't. Second and goal at the three now. Interesting that Morningweg went to the air. Let's see if he keeps it on the ground now, just three yards away. He'll give the ball off to the second man, stacked up short of the goal line. Trying at that time was, uh, see they've dipped into their backups a bit here. The ball carrier was Alan Boltzheim. Alan Boltzheim. He's a 5'11 freshman. Went to Gonzaga Prep in Spokane, so another Washingtonian. But the loggers stacked him up short of the goal line. It'll be a third down now. Third and goal, and in fact, the ball put down back at the six. Morning Wag. Did not start, but his quarterback most of the time will throw for it. Straight back, throws to the far corner. A man is there, and pass interference will be called on the loggers right there. That Smith was, knew he was beat and just went after the uh, retentive receiver. Larry Smith made the tackle in the end zone, as you saw, about two, three seconds before the ball ever got there. That was just a play born of desperation. As Smith, uh, like you said, he knew he was beat, and he just stopped the touchdown from being scored is all he did. But it will be a first and goal from the one. Probably just delayed the inevitable. Although you can never tell. So first and goal from the one now. How quickly has it turned after the loggers seem to have things going their way on the long touchdown to Thacker. But nothing's gone right for them since then. 
Or any wag. He's had two good quarterback sneaks. Let's see if he might take one over himself right here. He will try it, wedging his way in. Did he make it or not? Touchdown. Touchdown. Morning leg. Indeed does use the sneak. And is in for the touchdown. He has been as good a runner as he's been passer today. Picking up two key first downs and now a touchdown. And the loggers have a mighty steep hill to climb now, trailing 30 to 10 with the point after coming up. So the Loggers guilty of two key mistakes, an interception on a pass that I believe was tip, then a fumble, the pass interference in the end zone, but that wasn't the key mistake. It was the fumble and the interception. And now the point after, Rominger's kick is perfect. So the Loggers, with their biggest deficit staring them in the face right now, trail Montana by a score of 31 to 10. You're definitely right there. It has been. It's two key turnovers, and uh, probably the same thing happened to them as happened to Montana last week, and they're lost to Hawaii, where Hawaii was able to run up a lot of points directly from turnovers without even moving the ball. Hawaii, or excuse me, Montana, really were uh, on the ropes as they had uh, let a lead slip, 17-3 to lead slip away as uh, one of their defensive backs went for a pass instead of uh, trying to make the tackle. UPS was back in the game 17-10, to forced Montana to punt. It looked like things were going UPS's way as they were marching the foul ball down the field with about three consecutive short passes. But then there was the pass interception. And then the fumble was set up, it was returned for a touchdown. The fumble that was set up, set up another touchdown. And now, really, Montana pretty much has the game under control. And they did it all in about a space of about a minute and 30 seconds, too. Richard LaMonica will go back deep now, along with uh, Ron Bagby. The kick, again, will be a very long one, and will go all the way out of the end zone. So the Hoggers... They'll start on offense from the 20 once again, and I want to tell you, it seems that we've been down at that end of the field now for an hour and a half. Yeah, I think uh, Montana defense maybe could be getting tired pretty soon. Well, the Montana defense can take some pride, as Jim pointed out in a good comparison last week. University of Hawaii Rainbows forced turnovers that were costly. This week, the Grizzlies have forced some longer miscues. Kevin Reimer will continue at quarterback for the Loggers. Pax will shift into a power eye behind him. From the 20, Reimer back to throw. He's in trouble, and he'll be sacked back inside the 15. Well, I think not only has the longer defense perhaps gotten a little weary, but also maybe the offensive line breaking down somewhat, although in this spot, Montana can just kind of go ahead and tee off on the quarterback right now. Well, they certainly can. That's all they have to do. They're, they're not respecting the run at all now. They know they're going to pass, and they are just looking for the pass. Loggers will go from the shotgun. Reimer throws to the near side, and the ball is caught. Estes comes up rather unhappily. John Besterman who made that was catch. Besterman, okay. It was uh, both these scores, the games are kind of interesting that they're uh, loggers uh, going without a huddle now. They're trying to in the hurry up offense already. 4.35 to go in the ball game. Reimer will throw a high rainbow pass that's almost intercepted. That was Scott Timberman, the 6'3 defensive back, 190 pound sophomore from Butte, who almost came up with that ball. Really, as, as I was trying to point out, is that uh, both of these teams uh, have had scores run up on them. Their defenses have had scores run up on them in the past couple of weeks. Last week was Montana. This week is UPS. And really, those points can be attributed to the offense by turnovers. Well, the score at 31-10, that was the same score as last week's final. But this time, the shoe was on the other foot. Stevens, from right around the goal line, will get away a, a short kick. The loggers will need a good bounce here, and they don't really get it. The ball, well, now it takes a pretty good roll for UPS. Up near midfield, and it'll roll dead at about the 47. Really, loggers are probably putting on a pretty good show, or at least they're, they show. At least they seem to show that they probably are trying to win the game, or at least they're putting on a show that they're trying to win, as they are going into a hurry-up offense with four minutes left to go in the game. 
have to keep trying anyway. We'll see what Montana does. I imagine Montana will probably keep the ball on the ground once again. New quarterback in for New Montana. Quarterback, yeah, indeed. The third string quarterback will come in now. Alan Powell. Pitch on the far side. Down to about the 30, or check it, about the 42 yard line. Ball carrier again was Botsheim, Alan Botsheim. The new quarterback for Montana now taking over is Bob Connors. No, wait, it won't be Connors. After all, it's going to be uh, Powell. Yeah, Alan Powell will take over the 6'4", 200-pound junior. He's from Lewistown, Montana. So Powell will take over in there. Connors was listed as the number three quarterback. But it'll be Powell. Short gain on the play there for Montana. That was Botsheim once again, picking up a couple of yards, bringing up a third and four for Montana. A lot of substitutions now for both sides. The clock is down to 3.20, and it's 31-10 in favor of the Grizzlies. Okay, the Loggers were right with a team that is up a division from them until the two miscues deep in the Loggers' own territory cost them the two touchdowns that have put this one away. Powell will roll out, throw the ball, and it's incomplete over on the far side. Well, that's caught. Oh, did he hold it? No, I didn't yep. think he got it. Okay, he did. Looked like Kevin Stab made that Stab made that catch for uh, Montana. Certainly, uh, what you're saying is correct, and there's an old saying: it's called "turnovers will kill you," and they certainly have done that to UPS this afternoon. It's time to throw away the depth charts, I think, and yeah. go from the roster at this yes. point because <laughs> both teams have made a lot of changes, especially Montana right now. Good running play off the right side. 